Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Healthcare Without Harm Europe's webinar reducing food waste in the healthcare sector and beyond. Uh, just a few issues before we start. Uh, the webinar will be recorded and it will be possible to watch it afterwards on our website. And um, all questions you may have for uh, our speakers will be asked at the end. Please send all questions to Lloyd Evans, our communications officer at Agrivalham Europe, through the chat box um, at the end of the screen. Thank you. Um, my name is Agatha Ciorci, and I will be facilitating today's webinar. Uh, as we all know food waste is a huge problem for the environment, for society, and for the economy. And as we also know, globally 1.3 billion tons of food is lost or wasted annually, which is an equivalent to one third of all food produced. 88 million tons of food is wasted in the EU each year, and in the healthcare sector, food waste can be as high as 65% of food served. This is why international and European institutions are tackling food waste through the Sustainable Development Goal 12 and different national strategies in the European Union. Today we have three distinguished uh, speakers. Um, they are Barbara Frederick from the German Environment Protection Agency, Jasmine Wildermarsch uh, from the organization Food Wheel in, in Belgium, and then Thomas Lutikold from the organization Voice Watchers in the Netherlands. Uh, our speakers will present strategies to reduce food waste and will provide useful recommendations on how to go about measuring and preventing or reducing food waste. Um, I'm very happy now to give the floor to our first speaker, Barbara Frederick from the German Environment Agency, UBA. Barbara will present Germany's current approach to preventing food waste and will specifically present UBA guidelines on how to prevent food waste in the catering service. Um, Barbara, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Grazia. Hello, everybody. Um, yes, I want to start um, uh, with presenting now um, the first uh, to start with the waste prevention program in Germany, which is um, kind of the fundamental basis of our food prevention um, activities and very quick uh, look at the waste prevention program, which is of course based on Article 29 of the Waste Framework Directive and was set up um, and adopted by the German Federal Government in July 2013. And um, it's a um, program uh, which is um, um, programmed together of the federal level and the state's level. Uh, so also the, the German states contributed uh, to the national program and um, yes, the program as all the other waste prevention programs I think um, in other member states uh, looks at the whole chain uh, coming from resource depletion, um, the design and production phase um, of consumption goods and of course the use and consumption phase which is um, essential um, regarding the food waste issue of course and um, then finally the waste phase. So uh, maybe only to name some um, issues that were specifically addressed in the waste prevention program um, that were uh, repair and reuse and uh, the field of prevention and reduction of food waste is also especially addressed in the program and um, the new sharing economy um, is also one of the focuses uh, that the program wants to um, address. And um, maybe only two remarks. Um, yeah, what you find here is uh, some of the prevention measures that were suggested, um, especially regarding food waste prevention and um, uh, there is, uh, or there was at least, an uh, English version of the waste prevention program, um, and um, there will be probably a link on the um, website of the ministry where you can find this uh, German waste prevention program. But um, maybe to name a little bit uh, of the implementation procedure that were, uh, took place during uh, the last um, four years. 
Uh, what we did in Germany was that for these um, thematic issues that I just named, um, we had some dialogue cycles with stakeholders uh, where we um, set um, a focus on um, some certain issues that were um, from our point of view to be addressed um, in that special waste stream or prevention area. And uh, we looked uh, in the food waste prevention um, dialogue cycle that took place in 2015, 2016. We especially looked at out of home consumption and of food waste safety regulation enforcement. Um, so that's maybe the only things that I would like to say about the implementation process, but um, leading me directly um, to the ongoing initiatives in Germany uh, regarding food waste prevention. That is, is first of all, this um, federal campaign from the Ministry of uh, Food and Agriculture. Um, it's called um, Too Good for the Bin, and it um, comprises a lot of information, brochures, studies, recipes for cooking with leftovers, and education material as well for children as for a little bit older children, <laughs> up to 14 years. And um, there is a continuously um, outgoing newsletter every week or every two weeks. And um, so it's really trying to um, have an updated uh, look on the activities taking place in the food prevention sector in Germany. So this is um, what uh, the Ministry, um, not the Ministry of Environment, but the Ministry of Food and Agriculture does uh, on this issue. And um, of course, we did as well um, take part in the European Waste um, Reduction Week in 2014, when food waste was the, um, the thematic um, that was given to that uh, European uh, Day. And um, we, uh, for example, had a um, food waste information day as a professional school here in Saxony. Um, and of course, we used also some of those materials that European um, Commission um, prepares for this European week of waste reduction. So now um, going ahead, uh, uh, with uh, what we actively did in uh, European, uh, in, sorry, in the German Environment Agency, um, what we currently did last year was that we developed a guideline regarding prevention of food waste in the catering sector. And uh, what I mentioned before was that the starting point was to get some of the low hanging fruits and the out-of-house um, consumption. So we found in a study uh, that I haven't now uh, talked about, but uh, we found that a relatively high level of waste uh, occurs in the out-of-house consumption. And that's why we um, considered uh, that it might be a good idea to develop a guideline and focusing on event catering, which of course um, is something very used today or um, also very used in canteens and public canteens. And uh, what you find on the slide here is um, I tried to summarize who is addressed by this guideline and what is, of course, in the guideline, what are the main, the main aspects. Um, Mainly, um, it is to give some easy on tips and tricks how to prevent food waste along the various steps of the catering process. And uh, I think maybe it's important to mention that it not only addresses caterers and customers of catering services, but also what is, what is obviously getting more and more important to address as well event managers or um, agencies that contract uh, catering. So um, what was also, I think, quite useful what we did um, additionally to the guideline, we developed um, 
10 uh, fact sheets to the guideline and um, those fact sheets I would also like to invite you to download them on our website if you want to. They are available as well as the guideline is available in English and the fact sheets are as well. And they are trying really to point out uh, the crucial points of food waste prevention along a catering process. And yeah, as you can maybe see a little bit here on the slide, um, it tries to illustrate on a very um, summarized way, what are the easy steps really to prevent food waste. What we did, uh, secondly, this year, um, we did, apart from other activities under the Waste um, Prevention Program, we um, had an expert forum um, in Berlin this year in September, not so long ago yet. and. Um, the topic or the, the the aim of this expert forum was really uh, what uh, you can find here to a broad knowledge base and spread good examples because everybody knows that there are already uh, quite a lot of good examples, many examples, um, and we were trying to put those initiatives and good examples together. Um, and also, of course, to um, identify new um, ideas how to prevent food waste along the chain. Um, we found uh, five fields of that we were thinking were worth of being discussed in a small workshop. And you, you can find those um, here on the slide. We discussed on um, food waste arising from cosmetic standards, as we called it. Um, we always had an innovator of an initiative. You can find here um, this initiative, Culinary Misfits, which is a private initiative in Berlin located. Um, and yeah, and we discussed as well, of course, um, what can, how can uh, food waste prevention um, be strengthened by more uh, enabling more food donations. Um, and what I think is also quite interesting is uh, to look at uh, logistic systems that somehow can contribute to food waste, but uh, if they are innovative, they could also maybe uh, contribute quite a lot um, to preventing food waste. So um, as you can see on the next slide, um, we filed a um, draft uh, report of this expert forum um, that will also be shortly available in German and English as well. And um, only to to mention what we what are the next steps. Of course, we are still evaluating um, the outcome of this um, expert forum. We're about. 60 people, I think, um, took part in. And um, of course, we will try to um, implement and uh, that into the National Waste Prevention Program as well, or take it uh, into the procedure of maybe the program being updated. Um, and what is also maybe quite interesting in Germany, we have um, since last year spring, we have a national program for sustainable consumption. And there um, is also an implementation procedure ongoing where uh, certain fields of the um, sustainable consumption um, is, of course, um, food as well as housing and um, other fields uh, that have a big impact on the environment. So one um, duty is also to um, give input uh, to that uh, implementation process um, uh, for a sustainable consumption um, from our project. And of course, um, the other thing is that Germany is still uh, as well working as probably other member states um, on a national strategy on food waste prevention. Um, regarding SDG 12.3 and um, yeah and we try of course um, to 
give the results that we have already now uh, into this process. So what you find here on the last slide is um, the, the named uh, just named program uh, with its goals and yeah and uh, I didn't name now mobility is of course also a very important um, element of sustainable consumption which is addressed in this program as well. So um, yeah this is mainly it. I'm uh, uh very much looking forward to uh, your questions and um, discussion to follow up um, after the other presenta presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Barbara, for your very interesting presentation. And that, um, I said at the beginning of the webinar, uh, there will be a question and answer session at the end, uh, the last 15 minutes of uh, the webinar. Uh, so please uh, send your questions uh, through the chat box uh, to Lloyd Evans. Um, now, uh, from the national program of uh, Germany, uh, we go to our uh, second speaker, and uh, particularly to a practical project in the healthcare sector. Jasmine Wildermersch will illustrate the first results of measuring food waste in the healthcare sector in Flanders in the context of a practical project with hospitals in Bruges in Belgium, uh, supported by uh, the city of Bruges. And Jasmine comes from the organization uh, Food, uh, food Win in, uh, in Flanders. Uh, Jasmine, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Grazia. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Jasmine from Foodwind, that is the Food Waste Innovation Network. And as Gracia said, I will talk, be talking about a project in Bruges on healthcare institutions uh, now. Um, but first, let me introduce myself. This is me. I'm in the middle, and this is the team. Uh, we're f f currently five very motivated and young people who are uh, determined to, to fight food waste. Um, and as an introduction, I'll, I'll, I'll explain uh, the, fir the first time that I was shocked about the, the immensity of, of the food waste problem. This is an image of uh, the news in 2015. Uh, Belgium was allowed to dump more than 20,000 tons of apples and pear. And uh, I'm a passionate fruit grower in my uh, spare time. So you can imagine this shocked me enormously. I know how much time and love and patience and knowledge it takes to grow fruit and uh, to see so much apples and pears being wasted just broke my heart. So we took action then. We made juice out of the apples um, and we, we sold it. And from that moment on, I became part of a, a group of innovators, entrepreneurs in, in Europe that are all trying to tackle food waste. Um, and we as Foodwin, we believe that we have to work together with all these innovators to, collabor to collaborate with them to, to fight food waste. Um, I think Barbara already mentioned some. Huh? You have people making apps to find logistic systems uh, to food waste. You have people creating new products uh, from surplus food. And you have people like Thomas, who will be the next speaker, who look at the food waste problem from really a, an, innov an innovative point of view. So we, we want to gather all these people's, people together to fight food waste in, um, in cities. And you can ask yourself now, why cities? Well, more and more people live in cities, of course. So, and that's also where they consume their food. Um, so people in their houses consume food, but also in restaurants, in retail. So that's where most of the food waste is, is occurring, uh, at the end of the food chain, at least. Um, and what you also find in cities are healthcare facilities, of course. When you think about healthcare, you, you first think about providing care, which is normal. But um, many people actually get their meal as well in health, healthcare facilities. In Flanders, every day the healthcare institutions provide meals to 300,000 people, which is a lot. It's, if you come to think about it, it's actually one of the biggest catering um, institutions of, of the region. Um, but yeah, healthcare institutions also waste a lot. It's estimated that they waste in Flanders approximately 15,000 tons of food 
uh, every year, um, which is um, 13, wasting 30 million euros a year. Um, it's a big problem. It's bigger in healthcare institutions than in regular catering and uh, catering businesses, but that's because food waste in healthcare is a very unique challenge. Patients are, for example, uh, involuntary consumers, so they they're not like consumers in a restaurant. Um, now, on the other hand, the predicting the number of patients is, of course, also very difficult in. in healthcare institutions. But the good news is, um, that was all the bad news, huh? the good news now is that research has shown that it is possible to reduce um, food waste in healthcare institutions with 50%. So how is then uh, the question? And with Foodwind we have developed a, a process. Uh, we take institutions through three steps in which we help them reducing their food waste. Our first step is measuring. Uh, measuring is important for two things. First of all, measuring um, allows you to, to identify the problem you have exactly. If you do not measure, you can estimate or, or think what your problem might be and then take some actions, but you're never exactly sure what it is. So by measuring, you can really say like, this is where the problem is. Like either it's plate waste, kitchen waste, or meals that are returned without being consumed. Is it meat? Is it starch? Is it vegetables? Is it a cafeteria or is it patients? So by measuring, you can really identify the problem. And the second thing why measuring is important is because it allows you to monitor your impact. If you start taking actions without having measured, um, you can never know whether you re really have impact. If you first have measured, then you can really see like, okay, with these measures, we have had this impact. So measuring is an important step. And then once you have identified your challenges, you go to step two, which is developing your solutions. And then once you have developed solutions, we go to step three and it's testing and monitoring uh, your solutions. If you have an idea of the solutions, you never apply it at once to the whole um, the whole institution. So it's better to test it out one day, maybe, or one de department, maybe one week, and then to see what the uh, the impact is, and also to see like uh, whether it's feasible for personnel uh, to 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 make that change happen. So this is the the, the process that we we developed, and of course, as I said, we like to work with cities. So this we are doing together with the city of Bruges. Bruges uh, created a food lab. Food Lab. This is a stakeholder platform uh, which brings together all the people in the city working with food. And they drew up some guidelines, and one of the guidelines was producing food waste. And um, actually, the, the healthcare institutions were really, um, yeah, they were committed to reduce food waste. So, together with them, we, we are now going through uh, this process of, of three steps. Uh, for this year, and we have different types of uh, healthcare institutions. We have a daycare, daycare center for kids with psychological problems. We also have care facilities which we're following up, and also some hospitals. Now, for this presentation, I will focus on hospitals because, of course, our process or our, um, the, the things we are doing with them slightly differ, differs according to the type of healthcare institutions, but now I will so focus on, uh, on hospitals. So the first step is measuring. Um, the big question is, of course, what do you want to measure? Um, so we, when we come into a, a hospital, the first thing we do is sit together with uh, kitchen personnel and man managing personnel and see, okay, what do you want to know? Uh, is it differences between departments you want to know? Do you want to know what plate, how much plate waste you have, how much kitchen waste you have, how much time do you have to, to measure? Do you want to know hot meals, lunch, uh, and breakfast, cafeteria or patients? So it's first very important to know what they want to measure and what you want to measure. And by mapping the, the food processes in the, in the institution, you, you know where you exactly can measure what. 
So that's the first thing. And then how uh, we measure? Well, we actually we do not we do not as Foodwin we do not measure ourselves. We let the the kitchen personnel measure themselves. Um, there are two very good reasons to do that. At, on the one hand, measuring is a very powerful sensibilization tool. By measuring, the kitchen personnel is really shocked by the amount of food waste. So now they're also really, really engaged in, in doing something and, and solving the problem. And the second thing is uh, has to do with empowerment uh, or with ownership uh, of the process. Like we are now supporting them for a year, but we want them to continue this work uh, after that. So if they can measure them themselves, they can continue without us. So that's why we, we support them and train them how to measure, but they measure it themselves. Um, so we have one or two responsibilities that uh, responsibles that measure in each hospital. Um, we weigh, of course, the, the foods, different categories. Um, and so we weigh, we know the amount of food that is being wasted, but then it's also important to calculate very valuable indicators like the amount of food wasted in grams per day per patient, because that gives you a lot of information also. You can compare it with other hospitals. And of course, relating the amount of food wasted with the cost uh, of it is also very important, because that allows you to, to convince managers um, yeah, to really invest in, in looking for solutions uh, to food waste. Um, so quick some results here um, for the hospitals. So 30 to 40 percent of the food in the hospitals being wasted. That's a, a shocking amount, but it, it is similar to numbers that uh, came up in international studies. And so a hospital each year loses 100,000 to 150,000 uh, euro a year by, uh, through food waste. So, as I said, measuring allows you to identify some big challenges. Uh, uh, we've seen that the patients, rather than the visitors' cafeteria, waste a lot of food. Biggest problem was hot meals and not lunch and, and, and breakfast. Plate waste was uh, the biggest problem and not kitchen waste or returned meals without, uh, without being eaten. And then the weekend, uh, apparently also very difficult to predict, to predict what and how much people will eat in the weekend. And then if you look at it from an economic, economical point of view, meat was uh, the biggest problem in the hospitals. These are challenges that are complex. You cannot, in a snap, say, OK, let's do this. This is the solution. Um, so you really have to develop solutions for this. But then on the other hand, you also have a few quick wins that become clear when you measure. Like we've seen that. Soup, sauce, and cafeteria bread. Each day, there was a huge amount of uh, these things that are that were left over each day. So it's very difficult to just order or prepare less. Um, and nobody will know. You will only win uh, some money. So it's it's a very quick win. Same goes for weekend breakfast uh, in the cafeteria. Apparently, they thought that many people were coming to have breakfast in the visitors' cafeteria, but that was not so. So it was always uh, yeah, all the, the breakfast was being wasted. So when you have measured, measured you can um, develop solutions. And we do that together, again, with, uh, with the personnel. We do that through an innovation workshop. It's a one-day workshop, and we ask the institutions to bring a team, um, a team of kitchen personnel, managing personnel, and care personnel. Um, that is important because you will only find a very, very good solution if together, because it's, it's me, it takes the different kinds of, of people to come to the very good solution, which also everybody will agree with. And it's also important that if you only have kitchen personnel, they will blame care personnel and vice versa. So if you have them together, you can really work to to solution. So we do this in one day. We go through an ins inspiration uh, session and then a brainstorm session. And at the end of the day, they have a, an action plan ready. Um, to give some examples of the, the solutions the institutions came up with. 
So a big problem was communication, it seems, not only between departments, but also between patients and kitchen personnel or care personnel. And a solution that then one of the hospitals came up with was like they had four uh, menu options, which is a lot, it's, and it's nice for a patient. But in, in, in essence, you see that when care personnel are, are asking patients what they want to eat, they don't even have the time to say the four options. So there's, not a, there's no good communication between patient and, and care personnel at that moment. So the, the hospital decided to just simply reduce the number of options, uh, menu options, which will, allow them, uh, which, which will allow them to really give good explanation about these options and just have a clearer view on what the patient wants and uh, as a result have less food waste. So that was just one of the solutions uh, that came up. So now we're in the, in the third phase with the institutions. Uh, we're testing and monitoring um, what they are doing, uh, their action plan. And um, yeah, we're really believing, I believe I'm, I'm doing this project uh, and I believe 100% that we will have a very nice impact. Um, not only do I think that the solutions are very good, I also see that the personnel is really, really engaged in this project and very positive. They really want to make a difference. So that will ensure the, the positivity of, of this project. So as Foodwin, this is of course what we want. We want to support people finding solutions and uh, having impact. And uh, we hope that uh, we can do this with many other healthcare institutions um, in Europe. Um, so thank you everybody and any questions are welcome. Thank you very much. All questions will be asked at the end after our first speaker. Our first speaker is Thomas uh, Lukihold uh, from the organization Voice Watchers in the Netherlands. And as Jasmine said, he has developed uh, different innovative solutions for reducing food waste. And um, Thomas will uh, elaborate on implications of uh, the food, of food waste problem, uh, providing specific recommendations on how to go about measuring and reducing food waste and showcasing best practices in the Netherlands. Thank you. Thomas, the floor is yours. Thank you, Katia. Thank you. Um, oh, well, uh, um, this is me uh, to start off with. This is me shining in a kitchen uh, at the London Olympics. I've been working in restaurants for over 10 years now and when I was working in kitchens I had to throw away a lot of food um, resulting in food waste and uh, this strikes me by heart. A lot of the times I was arguing with the head chef of why we were doing this but I never got a satisfying uh, answer because he didn't know how to tackle food waste. At the moment when I was working in the restaurants, I studied economics, business economics, and I asked uh, my study if I am allowed to, to graduate on the topic of food waste as a business economic in the hospitality branch. And um, well, I succeeded. I graduated in 2013, and I was so, so enthusiastic about the topic that I wanted to work uh, in the food waste scene. I, I entered Google finding food waste jobs and, well, basically there was none job available. Uh, so I created my own. I started off as Waste Watcher uh, and this gr has grown into a company with uh, together four people, um, students or, or technicians who are working with me and uh, we help organizations to reduce food waste. Um, and we do this by sharing knowledge, uh, knowledge about food waste. And we also do big data analysis uh, on the existence of food waste because we want to understand why food is wasted, uh, why food waste is occurring, and how we can prevent it. Uh, I think that's our main goal, to, to know food waste and to prevent it from not wasting, from not getting wasted in the end. But to get our knowledge, we created an online uh, measuring tool. Uh, it's, it's called Waste Watches also. And um, this tool uh, is useful for kitchen staffs, chefs, um, 
and it's been used in Holland quite a lot. We've got over 60 locations working with it and they provide us on a daily basis some information on specific ingredients and products on what they are offering, what they are wasting and what they are and, and on how much uh, consumers they have been serving. And this data is our basis for the analysis we do. And because we were doing this, we uh, received a really nice prize. Um, this is a bit of a weird picture because the prize is that orange carrot. Uh, got some really weird questions at the airport when taking it back to Holland because I received it in Berlin. Um, they thought I was a smuggler. But anyway, um, we were awarded as one of the best food waste initiatives in Europe. Uh, by the Refresh Group, it's one of the uh, research groups of the European Union, and we are very proud of it because, um, well, they they say that that the future uh, lies in in having the knowledge of finding food waste, and that we are uh, managing on reaching that level of knowledge. Um, and one way we share this knowledge uh, is with our clients is to share a magazine, and we do this. Uh, for hospitals, hotels, business cafeterias, and banking locations. I'm not quite sure if banking is an English word, but um, if not, consider it as party catering. And that's basically what Waste Watches does. Um, but shortly, shortly, I want to point out why is preventing food waste so important. And um, well, that's because we've only got one of this, this guy, we've only got one Earth, and at the moment we are using uh, its resources so much um, that this Earth is going to end uh, once, and we don't know why, when and why. We do know why, but we do not know when. Um, but we have to be careful with our resources, and by preventing food waste, uh, we tackle a lot of environmental impacts of food waste. And I'm not going to explain them a lot because they're really tough topics and each of one of them is a webinar on itself. Um, but I think about the CO2 levels of food and think about when you have meat, for example, there's a lot of CO2 needed to create the meat in first. And if you throw away the meat, you also throw away a fair reason why we use the CO2. Um, consider about land usage. Um, I think the Amazon is a really good example. We use a lot of land to produce uh, cow feed, and if you throw that away, we also throw away the reason why we are using this huge amount of land. Um, water, the water usage of food products is really high. Once again, when we waste it, it's such a shame. Uh, there's a lot of food hunger in the world. Uh, well one part of the world is wasting a lot of food, the other part of the world uh, doesn't have enough food, which is a really wicked situation. And it costs us a lot, a lot of money. But I continue quickly, uh, because I thought, how is this possible? Because one thing is sure, you can be for food waste. I know everybody is against food waste, but it's so tough to prevent it. And I find out that having knowledge to prevent food waste it's main key why we are not succeeding uh, right now, although we are succeeding, but on a really low level. And I found out that if you have the knowledge on how to pretend food waste, um, you are able to do it. Uh, all my clients who I speak, they are not willing to waste over millions of euros of good food, but they don't know how to activate uh, the euros of food which lies in their bin. So knowledge is main key, it's its main issue why this is happening. Um, and we of Waste Watchers want to find out why this knowledge, of, we want to know the knowledge uh, to prevent food waste. And we do this with a very simple uh, free statement uh, system, circularity maybe. Um, we capture data, as I told you, we have an online registering tool uh, to get data in of a lot of restaurants. Uh, we convert it to knowledge. We want to know why, when, how, and with what food waste is occurring. 
and then we um, advise modifications towards our clients. They are going to test it so we also can have data of if this modification was good or not. And I've got some explanations, some examples with me um, because we find out that there are different levels of variables who can influence the degree of food waste. Uh, and although there are more of them, but I have three examples with me. And one of them is, um, is the weather. Uh, and the weather is mostly influenced by the season. And season and weather influences uh, have a huge impact on food waste. And for example, we see that salads are wasted more in the winter, and especially more on days with a lot of rain. Uh, then in the summer and on days with a lot of sun because the weather and the season influences our eating habits and therefore also our food waste patterns. Um, and we see that a lot of locations are not fully aware about the impact of these weather or seasonal influences and therefore um, offering too much supply. Uh, also in hospitals this one is very important because we see that, that a specific group of people are affecting really, really strong against warm and cold weather. Um, people tend to eat differently per season, resulting in different waste patterns per season. And the second level is the day of the week. It sounds very simple, but we see that a lot of people are not aware of it. Uh, people eat differently per day of the week. For example, a Monday isn't a Friday. And also in hospitals and in elderly cares, we see that, um, that, that the eating habits are turning more luxury towards the weekend. Um, I've got a graph with me. I won't explain it, but what it says, we've got two groups, and we find out that a group of non-luxury food is getting more popular on the end of the week. Well, uh, no, I, I said it wrong. A group of not-luxury food has been popular on a Monday, with the yellow dot on the Monday, on the map, it's a search graph. And we find out that the luxury goods are getting more and more popular towards the Friday and are really unpopular on a Monday. And this is also turning up in hospitals um, where we see that, that uh, patients, and I, I would call them cons consumers, are eating luxury towards the Friday. Uh, for example, the boiled potatoes a switch to baked potatoes on a Friday and therefore we see that a lot of boiled potatoes are wasted on a Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And I've got even a third level, a third degree of influence. Uh, we find out that culinary influence on the day are really important um, to let people choose if they want a product or not. And people tend to eat differently per type of dish. And one really strong thing we find out is that when you add um, pasta, it's called vermicelli in Dutch, I'm not quite sure if that is English, but when you add pasta to your soup, at least in Holland, uh, I can guarantee you that this soup is uh, above average wasted because people don't like adding pasta to the soup, it's really old fashioned. Uh, and we can also see what kind of effect adding a paprika or, um, or a leek to a soup is. Uh, for the popularity for your soup and therefore also the risk and chance of getting it wasted. Um, although those are just three types of variables we find out, but there are even more. I don't have time to explain them, but, but think about regional differences. Um, the Dutch, the Netherlands is really small, but we found out that it's that there are really big differences between Rotterdam, Utrecht and Amsterdam concerning to uh, the intake of fish and the waste levels of fish products. Um, we see cultural differences uh, from the east to the west to the north and the south in Holland and we of course see daily weather influence. Uh, I've already mentioned it a little bit. Um, and we don't know yet what the international influences are because we expect that the Dutch are eating a little bit different than the Belgium. And well, I always say profit lies in the variance of the averages. Uh, we see that, that especially hospitals and elderly cares are seeing a patient and a consumer as one, uh, which makes it easy to, to build up business processes. Uh, but if you really want to adjust 
right health care, the right care concerning to food towards your patients, you have to find out uh, the specific needs per patient, per group, uh, because that's where the profit lies. A short intake on what the future holds. Um, well, the fun thing is that, that we collect data and we are uh, crunching this data to find out how and when food waste is occurring. And we are getting there to, to search for an optimum and to find out per person, per department, per hospital, per day and per project uh, what it does and what, what the actual intake is per product, per person, per department, etc. Uh, which makes it even possible to forecast. We're in the early stage of forecasting intake and therefore also food waste uh, in some situations. And we really think that this is going to be the future. Um, well, it's a really abrupt end, but this is my ending, uh, ending page already. Um, and basically, uh, I see uh, that I'm done. So I give it back to Grazia and I'm looking forward to uh, here any questions of you? Thank you very much, Thomas, and thank you very much for uh, your uh, practical example. It was a very good presentation. I have a question for you. Um, you mentioned your online software tool to measure uh, food waste. How easy or how difficult it is to measure food waste with your tool? Have you got any feedback from uh, the people that have used that? Um, well, we we speak with chefs and people on the working floor, and what we get back is that it's really easy, um, as we only want to know what are you offering and what are you wasting, and we don't we just let them count what is wasted, and they fill it in daily. Um, it takes them five minutes per day, and we got really good feedback from our clients that it's not. Very tough to do. Thank you very much. And I have another question for uh, Barbara. Barbara, do you have any results from the use of uh, the guidelines that uh, you have produced in this action? Uh, sorry, can you uh, re repeat again? I didn't quite get the question. Yeah. Uh, there is a question that came through for you. Do you have any results from the use of the guidelines that you both produced and the fact sheets from a couple of analysts that have used the, uh, the fact sheets, uh, the guidelines that you have produced? Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, we actually we don't have results like uh, a number of um, participating enterprises but we um, have distributed the, the guideline quite a lot. And um, w the feedback is that um, the guideline is normally not um, as read, but is not uh, so useful as uh, the fact sheets are. And that's also why I tried to a uh, little bit um, stress on those, because they, I think they really give a, um, very um, short and quick look on the um, yeah on the most promising steps along the chain. So I can't really give you numbers or data about the um, the use of the um, guidance. Sorry for that. Thank you, Barbara. Um, I have a question from ja for Jasmine uh, that came through. Um, Justin, uh, can you give a practical example um, on uh, how you've measured food waste or uh, plate waste uh, in uh, one specific hospital in Bruges and what are the next steps that, that the hospital is taking forward? Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, practical. <clears throat> The practical things we are doing for, for measuring um, plate waste is quite easy. So you have like little chariots per department, I don't know how to say it, um, that, that, that come back into the kitchen. And there um, you just have plates coming back, uh, which are full of 
plate waste, and then we divide into starch, vegetables, and meat in big buckets, and then you just measure the buckets. Um, so it goes quite fast. Uh, definitely, if you don't want to know the difference between departments. So, but if you want to know the difference between departments, then you have to do this separately for all the departments, um, which is of course difficult. We also only measure two departments for every hospital because if not, it would take a, a lot of time and not that much that it costs a lot of time, but it's, I don't know if you ever have been to a kitchen in a, in a hospital, but it's, um, it's a process that goes very, very quickly. So washing the dishes, cooking, um, distributing the plates. So you cannot disturb the process, process too much. So you have to go very quickly. Um, and that's why if you only do it for two departments, you don't disturb uh, the, the, the process. If you do it for the whole hospital, it's uh, quite some work. And then some practical things that they are now uh, doing. So as I said, we have we identified a few quick wins, like um, with the measurements. There are some things that they can just do from now, like um, they've seen that the, the amount of sauce they, they give to patients is too much. Uh, every All patients uh, still have a sauce in their plates. So these are very small details that you can just do directly. Um, and then there are a few things for which you really have to work with the whole hospital, uh, together with the whole hospital. Uh, communication is a, is a big step. So one of the things that we are now doing with the hospitals is um, putting uh, the people that are recording the, the what the patients want to eat to, to eat for as, a, as, as for dinner or as, as a lunch. Um, putting the, the people that are recording this together with the people of the kitchen and to see like how they can help each other because it's clear that um, yeah there's a, a lot of miscommunication there and um, it's more a manager uh, managerial problem but uh, I'm sure it will affect the yeah the food waste problem very positively. Thank you very much, I have. A um, one question for all three speakers. Uh, how important is the economic impact uh, for the food service sector in scaling up such an initiative, uh, successful initiatives in uh, reducing food waste? And we can start with uh, Barbara and then Jasmine and Thomas. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Gracia, for this question. Um, I think um, economic uh, value of these um, prevention measures is very important and also to, to show um, the economic uh, value that is, can be successfully gained by, as Jasmine just said, uh, quick wins, but maybe also in a, on a second, in a second uh, row measures that will take longer. Um, because um, only if you um, if you show the economic value, then you will be able to get the management board of the company on your side and really to roll out um, small uh, preventive measure in an enterprise um, to a to a broader scale. So I think very important to stress. Um, yeah, as I said, um, 30 million, uh, food waste costs Flanders 30 million, and I, I once calculated very, very roughly how much that is. I think it's about 2% of the total budget for, for healthcare, and that doesn't seem a lot, but it, for me it is a lot if you know that you just throw it in the, in the bin. So I think there's a lot to gain economically, and then what I want to add uh, to that is that many issues, sustainability issues, cost money. So you have to invest uh, in it uh, without having, without winning any money. And food waste is actually one of the only issues where you can win money. Uh, so it's really low hanging fruit. And as food win, we also always say like, the money you win by reducing your food waste, 
food waste, don't see it as just winning money and then saving cost, but you can invest it again in, in quality um, or in, in other sustainability issues that your institution um, encounters. So by doing that, probably again, you will have a beneficial effect on food waste. So yeah, I think the economic issue is important, but I also think you have to look further than that. Thank you. Then I'm a last and as a uh, business economic, um, uh, well, I, I can deny uh, economics are really important concerning to food waste. Um, so I'm following the, the next two speakers with, uh, with saying, well, yeah, economics is important. Um, but what Jasmine also said, um, uh, it's really weird that, that you are making so, so high amount of costs. And what I would like to add to it is that uh, what I see is that food waste not only costs a lot of money because you throw away a product, but what a lot of people don't see is that it also takes up uh, time of your workers to make food waste in the beginning. Um, secondly, uh, people are transporting wasted food uh, from the beginning to the end uh, towards an old hospital. So there are people working on it to transp transport it while it's not necessary. And so there are a lot of aspects into the process which are done without a reason if you throw food away. And what I found out with, with some clients of mine is that when you really cut out food waste, um, you're also going to benefit on the efficiency. And although that doesn't have a, a strong value, um, it helps to clear up the business process and to get things uh, efficient, more efficient, more effectively. And it results to, to a higher conversion rate of your business process, resulting into quality, um, and that's the real win of fighting food waste in the end. But that's my answer, Katia. Thank you very much to all three of you. I have um, another question um, for Jasmine. Uh, do patients order at the bedside using electronic tablets or through a paper ordering system? And how close um, to meal times uh, do patients order food? For example, after breakfast they order lunch or supper. Uh, what is your experience, Jasmine? Yeah, well, so the experience is that that is indeed very important um, when people can order. And hospitals, they can do it day minus one. So that means that you order today for what you will eat tomorrow. Um, and you, they order orally. Um, so they, they, they communicate with the care personnel. It is indeed one of the, the, the things we are thinking about um, to change this uh, to indeed because it's, it's it's simple. Care personnel don't have time um, and they have to write it down. And patients have so much time and they don't get the time to think about it or write it down. So it would be very interesting if you give the work to the patients rather than to the care care personnel. So if the the patients indeed could do it through. Um, uh, even through paper or through uh, some digital um, instrument. So we we are indeed looking into that with uh, the hospitals we are working with. But it's also more more difficult than that eh? because you, if you think about patients, there is a big variety of patients. I think you people with neurological problems. I don't think you can ask them to do it with to order their meals with a tablet. Also, for example, kids or or people just, ju that just came out of um, the operation room, um, for them it's it's less easy to to do this. So, but I think there are uh, certain patients that can can do this. So, yeah, we we are looking into this. Okay, I'm afraid we are getting to the end of. Uh of the webinar. Uh, I haven't got a chance to ask all the questions that came through, so please uh, uh, just to ask the attendees to email the questions to the speakers. 
I would like to thank our three speakers for their excellent presentations and for their commitment and the passion they put into their work, which I came across <laughs> really well. And um, yes, and until our next uh, uh, food waste or sustainable food web webinar, um, I, uh, I wish you a nice uh, evening, nice holidays, and goodbye. Bye-bye.